Greetings all and welcome to the Friday edition of Brian's Bible Break as we continue on our journey through the Psalms. And this morning we're in Psalm number 12 and reading verse 6 from the New Living Translation. Let's begin with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you and praise you for this glorious day. Lord, we're so grateful for having the opportunity to come into your holy presence, to pause, uh, to rest, and to reflect on your word. And so, God, as we meditate on your holy scriptures, would you speak into our hearts a word of encouragement and hope? Lord, would you quiet within us any voice but your own in the name of Jesus Christ, in whose precious name we pray. Amen. So Psalm 12, verse 6 says, The Lord's promises are pure, like silver refined in a furnace, purified seven times over. We talk a lot about the promises of God, that they are steadfast and true, that they, they are faithful, that God is faithful to his promises, and that he does not lie. He does not speak uh, untruth, but his word is truth, and so we can count on it. And so when we read this Psalm of David, and again, I encourage you to read through the whole Psalm. Uh, David is continuing on with his um, cries out to the Lord for the evil and wicked ways of, of those around him. But he states this truth as he proclaims this truth about God. And he says, the Lord's promises are pure. We live in a, in a, in a time and a day today where purity is hard to find within humanity and within all manner of of things it's hard to find pure honest things today we see on the news day after day about scams both on the internet and on the telephone people pretending to be something that they're not in order to get something from us, usually money. And they have gotten, especially on the internet, have gotten very good at replicating and pretending to be authentic when in fact they are not. They are false. They are not pure. They're not pure in their motives. And they're not pure in the way they present themselves. But that is not true of God. God is pure. His promises are pure. The Bible says that, that Jesus, and therefore God, is the same yesterday and today and forever. He is unchanging. We can count on him. Because... He is pure. His promises are pure. They are steadfast and true. And so we, we can place our faith, our hope, our trust in him because we know that, that with God there, is, there are no lies. There's no deceit. There's only purity. Purity of thought. Purity of intention. For we who are his beloved children, those who are in Christ. David says, like silver refined in a furnace, purified seven times over. When you think of, of most of us have probably never seen a refiner's furnace before. But I remember when I was in high school and, and one of the courses that I took in high school was um, offset printing and back in those days it was way before computers and or anything electronic and we had to form the uh, text for whatever it was we were we were printing with uh, little blocks of, of letters and then we would set them in lead. And the lead would then be used to put in the printing press to actually 
make the the copy. And I st and I remember the furnace that was used to melt the lead, and it wasn't a very big furnace, but the the pot that was used to melt the lead, and as the lead was melted, the impurities in the lead, the the um, the dross, if you will, um, would float to the surface. And before we set our type, we had to use a, a special skimming tool to skim off the the um, the stuff that was refined out as the as the lead was melted, so that the type uh, that was cast in the lead would be pure and clean and solid because if there was any of that any of that debris that kind of was refined out of the lead in that in that refining process remained in it then the typeface um the type that you were <clears throat> setting in the lead wouldn't necessarily be strong enough to to stand up to the printing process and that so when i read this verse in Psalm 12, I think of that. And I think of, of what David is saying about the purity of God's promises. It's like silver refined in a furnace, not once. Not like we did when, when we were melting lead to make type. And we just, we'd scoop it off and that would be it. But no, this is refined seven times. So it would be refined, it would be, it would be melted down, and then it would be allowed to cool and solidify. And then it would be melted down again. And the dross would be cleaned off the top. And then it would cool and solidify again. And they would do that seven times. And of course we know in, in scripture seven is a perfect number. So what David is getting at in this in this verse is that, that God's promises are perfectly pure that there is no error no possibility of a flaw in god's promises they are absolutely 100 percent pure perfectly pure and so we can count on them we can count on them because they are absolutely perfect and pure and so whatever it is you're facing today, friends, you know that you can go to our perfect God whose promises are perfect and pure and steadfast and true. And you know that if you go to God with whatever it is you're facing today, the counsel that you get receive from Him, the, the wisdom that you receive from Him, the guidance and the leading that you receive from Him is steadfast and true. It is pure according to His Word and His promises. There's no possibility of failure in God's Word because it is perfectly refined to perfect purity. And so friends, I encourage you Take whatever it is that you're dealing with today to the Lord in prayer, knowing that He will not mislead you or, or guide you in the, wrong, in the wrong direction. That whatever you take to the Lord in prayer, you will receive 100% perfect counsel from Him. But here's the key. When you hear from the Lord, don't, don't alter His direction. Don't say, well, I'll do that part, but I'm not going to do that part. In as much as God's word and God's promises are pure, when we receive counsel and wisdom from the Lord, we then need to follow it 100%. Even if it doesn't make sense to us, even if it, even if it, it challenges us or, or causes us to be conflicted. Take it to the Lord in prayer. 
And if you're conflicted, go to the Lord in prayer. Say, Lord, I'm conflicted with what you've told me. Is this what you want me to do? And he will answer you. Yes, that's what I want you to do. Or no, you misunderstood what I was saying. Listen carefully. And I speak from experience. And God will do it if you ask him. And so I encourage you, friends, because as the, as the hymn states and as I've quoted often, oh, what peace we often forfeit when we do not take whatever it is, our trials, our challenges, our concerns, our worries to the Lord in prayer. We forfeit peace, perfect, unfathomable, indescribable peace when we don't take whatever it is we're facing to the Lord in prayer. And so I encourage you, friends, Take whatever it is you're dealing with to the Lord in prayer this day. Trust in Him, and He will, he will give you wise counsel according to His will. Trust in Him, because He will never lead you astray. Let's pray together. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank You and praise You for this day. We thank You, Lord, that Your promises are pure, are steadfast and true. And that we can count on you. We can count on your promises. And we can count on your wisdom being poured out upon us when we come to you in prayer. And so, God, we commit this day to your care and your keeping. We commit our lives to your care and your, and your keeping. And we surrender to you whatever it is we're facing this day, knowing that you will take it and you will work it for good. For those who love you and are called according to your purpose. And so, O oh Lord, guide us and uphold us with your mighty and outstretched hand, that you may receive all the glory and the praise through everything we say and do this day. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Well, friends, thanks for joining me this morning for this short reflection on God's Word. I hope that it has been an encouragement to you. And as we are at the end of another week, uh, we're going to pause and um, I'm going to be off next week, so we'll have a week without any Bible breaks, but we'll return the following Tuesday and continue on with Psalm 13. And so friends, I just I want to encourage you. Um, I ho hope and pray that you have a blessed weekend. I want to encourage you to not forsake the gathering of God's people on the Sabbath day, so if you're able to gather in your local church, I want to encourage you to do so. Uh, if, if you're not able to or not comfortable gathering in large groups at this uh, point, I invite you to join us for our live stream on this uh, YouTube channel. Hopefully um, our live stream will work this weekend. And um, we pray for that. And uh, also, I, I also want to encourage you, and if you're traveling, um, when you're on vacation... The Sabbath day still arrives. Uh, the day to worship the Lord still arrives. And so wherever you find yourself on Sunday, I encourage you to find a local church. It's a great opportunity for you to get to worship with other Christians, other brothers and sisters in Christ, uh, maybe in a different tradition than you're accustomed to, but it's the same God that we worship and the same Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, whom we worship. So I encourage you, if you're traveling, take the opportunity to, to worship with, with a, a church where you are. Uh, they will be blessed by having you with them. Uh, and we've experienced that blessing here uh, during the summer as people who have been traveling to the falls have worshiped with us. So I encourage you to do that. And so friends, be kind, stay safe, Love generously as the Lord has loved you. And, and friends, just um, seek the Lord in all you do. And so, friends, go in peace. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his peace. And all God's people said together, Amen. Amen. See you in a week's time, friends.
Have a blessed day.